don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> you put your phone on. Uh, I did. Like Will Ferrell, what do I do with my hands? <laughs> All right, everybody, Ethan here with Standing Stone, and I've got my buddy Peter. What's going on? We are up in South Dakota hunting some pheasants, and we had a couple opportunities over the last few days to utilize our med kit, which is why I wanted to sit down and take a minute to go over what we have in the med kit, as well as remind y'all that uh, we sell med kits, and now they are going to be new and improved and i had peter take a look at our list of things he added a few things said matt you don't really need those we're going to go over that list and show you what is available in the med kits that we sell on our website as well as um, kind of show what some of those specific things can be used for on a hunting trip all right let's go ahead and get started buddy all right so um so some things we have kind of start with um, one of those is going to be skunk off. Um, we had that incident yesterday. We smelled a skunk and we, we didn't know who was going to get to use that. No. But luckily, it had already been been gone. So We got a, a big whiff and I was going, uh, hopefully it's not one of my dogs. <laughs> um, we've got that. Um, we've got a muzzle. So anytime a dog gets a wound, um, I think it's a good idea to have one of those, especially if you're kind of short of a person with hands, you know, trying to examine a foot that can be tender or something. Dog. Yeah, they're, I mean, they hurt. Or yeah, reach around and nip at you. So good thing so, to have. Um, we've got a couple things and we'll kind of, some of these will have some applications later as we talk about this, but some bandage scissors, um, some good little tweezers, pick me ups, and then good pair of hemostats. You get, a, you know, a bleeder on an ear or something like that. Those are really good quality hemostats to, to take care of that. Awesome. Um, we've got skin stapler. Um, could have used this last night. Um, we had a dog with a pretty nice little cut there. So we'll skin yeah, stapler. So on a regular basis. That would have been what I would have utilized. We had a, that cut on the inside of the leg, and I had to come in and cleaned it up, stapled it. But because we had the man here, um, he went ahead and put a stitch in it, which is the better option if it's if it's available. Yep. But, um, and then staple remover, because even me using these on a day-to-day -day basis, I end up um, needing to take one or two out that I misplaced wrong or something sure. like that. And then after 10 days, you will you can use those to take that out if that wound's healed. So Awesome. Um, nail clippers, um, definitely opportunity, especially if that first time of the season dogs don't have their nails down, a little broken nail or something like that. Yeah, when uh, when they're running, if that nail breaks, what you have to be able to do is trim it all back to help prevent it from breaking more or hurting more. Then you can kind of get it cleaned up just a little bit and then they've got to heal. But uh, nail clippers are definitely a must for that one. Yeah, um, in the kit we'll have a Mylar thermal blanket uh, and a thermometer. So temperature, you know, we're getting to that cold time of year, you know, get a dog in a bind or something like that, trying to get a dog back or last year we had uh we had cat fall through the ice and oh goodness yeah and you know even that was you we ended up utilizing one of those for that so having that in the kit was helpful um but if you have a dog do the same type of thing you know yeah. i mean you think the ice is frozen and plunk not a good deal for sure for sure um probiotics um this is a really good option um we've gave a lot of dogs those this week because uh, yeah that uh initial stress of the hunting trip and then um, a lot of times switching water we try and haul a lot of water with us but when they switch it can be a little bit stressful as well as drinking out of puddles and ponds yeah, just a big and, change and everything so yeah. for sure um we've got some cotton swabs so these are just longer q-tips um, I always tell people, you know, you've always on, especially short hairs or things like that, you're mm -hmm. pretty good to get in there with a Q-tip one, one and a half inches pretty easily to clean that ear out. So, okay. um, I think that's probably a pretty safe distance. Um, and then some ear cleaner to go along with that, getting grass seeds in there, you know, get home and they're just shaking their head a bunch, just flush that ear out and get all, get all those things out of there. Yeah. That's a big thing. I think that when I see it, we, we all see our dogs shake their heads on occasion. But if it happens, like if they shake their head and then they're shaking their head again and they kind of hang that ear or they're shaking their head again, they got something in there. And yeah. if you can flush it out, it makes it pretty easy. The tweezer or the, the hemostats, they work pretty good to grab down in there and kind of work on something in there if you've got a grass seed or something like that too. Yeah, absolutely. So, yep. Absolutely. Um, we've got that. Um, we don't have it here, but we'll have a, a dog first aid book that'll be included that's got very legit. It's got a lot of good good information in it. Yes, kind of what uh, what to do with the wounds, how long they're going to heal, yeah, uh, everything. Um, a couple different bandage options we've got. So elastic or vet wrap um, is going to be the product that would be the best to put over something. You got to be careful with this product. Get it wet. It can get a little tighter. Um, so. Um, you were showing me too, like when you actually put it on that you pre-stretch mm -hmm. instead of like was... 
it's it's easy to get it too tight if you just wrap it and wrap it and wrap it because yeah. it's stretching as and i'll you go. always put something under it so we'll have gauze in there so okay. like i would always put gauze as like a layer on that and then we'll put that over the top of that and then the other product that will be in there will be some elasticon um, and this stuff you cannot tear this stuff but that's really good for especially on the top side of, of putting it on the top of the dog's leg there and you can take that straight to the hair and then straight to the bandage and it'll keep it on there real tight and keep that bandage from slipping off so yeah and this well stuff doesn't have as much stretch to it does it no yeah no. so it works well cool um we got some uh skin glue um so i like that so both of these talk about these this emt gel which is a collagen based product that's going to help to seal a wound um, and then sometimes just a little cut will respond really well get it clean and then use some skin glue so this is just really good super glue but it re works really well on the skin so with the emt we actually had a dog that got pretty torn up pads you know you think about the abrasiveness in between the toes in between yeah. toes uh, not pads excuse me um in between toes it was just red and sore and irritated mm -hmm. um from running through cover and not quite 100 percent. even if they're 100 even if they're conditioned those pads yep. between toes everything can get worn yep. so that stuff would be able to help keep clean and uh yep help healing to happen for sure for but sure. if you actually get a, a cut cut you can glue it or would you glue like if you stapled something would you throw glue over no, top of it no no you just, just need something to close that that skin layer so okay yep um glue is obviously not going to hurt quite as bad um to the dog or, or maybe it's reactionary not that this necessarily hurts just the reaction to it mm -hmm. um Chlorhexidine, so cleaning solution. Um, so this is a, be a spray that we can spray on those wounds, try to clean those up. You can use these gauzes to to clean those up as well too. So if you were to do it, would you be spray spraying, wiping stuff off? I mean, let's say it's a small a small laceration from hitting a barbed wire fence or something. Yeah. Like that. So I would I would probably clean with water first. Okay. I would spray spray spray. Every, most of the time we got bottled water or something right. like that. Okay. So spray it. I would wash it with water again. Spray 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 wash that water off again and trying to flush anything mm -hmm. out that yep, could be yep. stuck in there so and use that again pop a little hole in the top of a water bowl gives you really good Ooh, pressure that's a good idea. um go from there so awesome yep um got some again for wounds got several wound options here but triple antibiotic ointment um just standard triple antibiotic um does a lot to, i think to help speed up wound healing so um we've got quick stop um, this is going to be um, you know, big bleeding is not going to do a whole lot, but I tell you, this works the best is on toes. So if you get a dog that quicks themselves or you get a broken down, you have to cut it back some and that toe just keeps bleeding. This stuff will work really good for that. Yeah, and you can just take some, you kind of pour it on and then pack it and then hold a little pressure. And mm -hmm. it's yep, works well. Good to go. Works well. Um, the Some tough foot, we'll have that included in here. Try to harden up our pads a little bit when we're running into some problems. Mm -hmm. It's great if you um, run a moth. It really starts that that healing and hardening process quickly. Yep. Um, eye lube, this will be the other one that's kind of really good. We get grass seeds in the eye. This is a, a water-based product, and so it'll it'll turn, get it in there, and it'll kind of start to work some stuff out of there. So good good product there. Um, what else we got on there? Got a little Benadryl. We'll have that included in that, a little blister pack of Benadryl as we start to, you know, dog gets stung by something or things like that. Um, so the signs of, and this happens on occasion, even at the, uh, at the kennel, we mm -hmm. see dogs that have small allergic reactions to something. And what you guys are looking for is uh, it would be bilateral. It would be equal on both sides. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay. So the lips or around their eyes, any of those mucousy membrane type areas, they start to puff up and it's going to be equal. If you have puff on one side, that's usually not as commonly an allergic reaction as it would be an infection based or uh, something yeah. else that way. But if it's equal, like especially their lips, all especially if you smaller. just find the dog, you know, sometimes they'll get stung and they'll kind of start out, but it, yeah. it's usually going to follow the rest of the face. Yeah. And then they'll get puffy eyes. They get puffy. That's usually that allergic reaction type of situation where uh, Benadryl will be really helpful. And that's one of those products, like if that happens, a lot of times you may need to get to the vet anyways, but you know, it's not uncommon to be a couple hours from the vet when you're out hunting for sure so yeah always i mean oh and it happens like uh sunday nights right i mean yeah. that's <laughs> when the vet's closed anyway and if you can do a little something to help and it's not a dire emergency um benadryl also help uh snake bites right i mean it's not a it's not a fix but yep. it's a good idea yep, yep, pop yep. uh the benadryl and head to the vet clinic so, so. got that and then um, the other thing we have in here is activated charcoal um so activated charcoal is going to be um and this is kind of ethan and i were talking about this so things to put in this bag and uh, we're, I made a great point we walked into the cook shack this weekend and yeah. there's rat poison on the ground and you know so we 
uh, you end up having a, a dog that gets into that, then we'll um, give it some hydrogen peroxide and that'll be in this kit as well. And we'll give some hydrogen peroxide, try to get the dog to vomit that back up and then um, start some activated charcoal. I'll, I'll tell you that this, that's going to be a more dire emergency, but had we been Sunday afternoon, I would st most, a lot of this stuff, you're still going to get in touch with the veterinarian, but I tell you what, to be able to have that and give that ahead of time before you get to the vet clinic, um, I think it would be um, really good, a good deal to have. So, and this has got the dosages right yep, on it. Yep, yep. Um, the, but that was my biggest thing. I was like, what would, we, what would we use activated charcoal for? And that's what the, you know, you're around old farmsteads and stuff like that. And you've got to have mice control most of the time in those places. And Sometimes it gets left out. So, yep. And then probably one of the other things we have in here would be some uh, either honey or in the NutraCal. Probably both of those products will be in there. And those products, um, you know, you get a dog that's down in the dumps and hypoglycemic. Uh, those things are definitely a possibility. Um, there's a couple of breeds that have, you know, labs have seen that where they'll get a mm -hmm. hypoglycemic episode. So you never know that maybe it's not your dog, but your buddy's hunting with a new dog they just got. And it's the first time out in the field and hunting harder than they normally do. And maybe their sugar just drops out pretty good. So, well, and what you're going to be looking for when you see that is, is, uh, unfortunately I have seen that firsthand and it, it moved to the point of even like a small seizure. Yeah. Extent. Yeah. Yep. So you see the dog and they'll just look wobbly and they won't be unsure. And usually that's that sugar bottomed out and they don't know what's going on they feel weak and everything else and then you are, if you can get something in them uh, a lot of times you can prevent that from happening yeah so. get in front of it for sure so i think that's the gist of everything we got in here perfect um, and then all of these this is my med kit which includes all of these stuff uh, all of these things excuse me but um this is the mud rivers uh bag it's really nice got zipper pockets a good pouch here for stuff to go in and then a big um, zipper here so the whole inside is pretty much open Ooh, I'll get it in front of the camera the whole inside is open and then there's actually extra because I keep an extra pair of clippers this is a good thing to get but these are the these are pretty high dollar ones so <laughs> it makes the med kit add up really really fast but um, you've got room for a few extra things in the bag it's easy to grab throw it in make sure you've got it anytime you're going cool well, guys, I think that is all we've got for you. Thanks, Peter, for your help with this. You bet. And uh, guys, I'm the guy with the pink gun. This is Peter Armstrong, and we will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.